So now let's discuss about the pre-colonial Philippines. The Cultural Evolution of the Philippines During the Pleistocene Epoch, the first settlers of the Philippines came from the present-day islands of the Malay Archipelago when sea levels were lower, creating land bridges connecting to the Southeast Asian mainland. These Paleolithic hunters may have followed herds of wild animals across these land beaches. Kaya nakarating sila dito sa Pilipinas dahil uh, sa pangangaso at dumaan sila sa land beaches. These people continue to be primarily hunters and food gatherers. Early migrations were made by the ancestors of the present-day people of the Ita and Agta tribes. So, sila yung pinakauna na mga uh, ancestors natin, ang mga Ita and Agta tribes. The Spanish colonizers called them Negritos. So, Negritos ang tawag ng mga Espanyol sa mga Eta and Agta tribes. Some Western historians assume that the aborigines of the Philippines were the Australo-Melanesia people who are distinctively small with dark skin and curly brown hair. So, yung ating mga ancestor ay meron talagang dark skin and curly, curly brown hair. They were the sisters of the people known today as Negritos or Eitas. So sila yung mga ninuno ng ating mga uh, ninuno ng Negritos at saka Eitas. So the hypothesis of cultural evolution of the early Filipinos, meron tayong dalawang hypothesis. First is mainland origin hypothesis. It is by Peter Billwood of the Australian National University and Casey Chang of Harvard University. Uh, the mainland origin hypothesis maintains that the early inhabitants originate from South China and Taiwan. So yung pinakauna daw na inhabitants natin ay nagmula sa South China and Taiwan. According sa mainland origin hypothesis. From there, they spread southward and westward, reaching northern Philippines by about 5,000 BC to 4,000 BC and to eastern Indonesia 4,500 years ago. They gradually replaced the hunting and gathering population. So, dahan dahan na, nawawala na yung hunting and gathering populations. Next is we have the island origin hypothesis. It believes that the prehistoric people originated and dispersed from island in Southeast Asia. So nagsimula daw ang mga tao, o nagmula ang mga tao from Southeast Asia. It is according to Wilhelm Solheim II of the University of Hawaii, the leading proponent of this idea.
He assumes that Proto-Austronesian developed primarily in northeastern Indonesia and Mindanao Island, expanding northwards with a developing maritime population through the Philippine Archipelago and into Taiwan. From there, they reached South China. Solem II believes that it was the Nusantau, the maritime oriented prehistoric people, who developed Proto Austronesian as a trade language along the coast of the northern Luzon, southern Taiwan, and South China between 4,500 and 5000 BC. Historians presuppose that between 300 and 200 BC, inhabitants of Malay Polynesian descent settled in the Philippine archipelago. They were mainly the agricultural and fishing people. Others wandered from place to place. There were 30 to 100 families in a society known Barangay. Tulas and bridges, clothing, pottery, jewelry, and the like are technological artifacts. Culture may be associated with manufactured materials for these are products of human behavior. Old Stone Age or Paleolithic period, 50,000 to 10,000 BC. It is the era of good stone tools and weapons. So, do you have any samples? In the Philippines, it was believed to have started in Cagayan Valley. The study of tool assemblages indicates the dominance of plate tools over large cobble tools. Man had no other tools than sharp edged stones that could be held by the hand. Core tools if the remaining core itself is used as the tool. We have also the pebble tools. These are the tools, rounded stones like those found in the riverbeds. Yan yung mga pebble tools natin. Cobble tools if these rounded stones are larger. So yan, mas, mas malaki sila sa pebble tools natin. Flake tools are skillfully edged and shaped. Man's principal way of adaptation to the environment was by hunting. 
Yan talaga ang ikinabubuhay nila noon yung pangangaso. Three barks were used for clothing. So yung ginagamit nila sa bilang damit ay yung mga three barks. Archaeological evidence shows kinilaw to be the earliest method of preparing fish for consumption, where vinegar or lime juice enhances the taste of the fish. In Mindanao, the juice of the tabon-tabon, a green fruit, is added to remove the fishy smell. Yan yung hitsura ng ating tabon-tabon. In Leyte and Cebu, they use coconut milk or yung tinatawag natin na gata. Yan yung ginagamit nila sa paggawa ng kinilaw. The selection of the Tabon Cave Complex in Lipuan Point, Quezon, Palawan, some 30,000 years ago, is an example of prehistoric planning for adaptation. It was discovered in 1962, the Tabon Cave. It was noted to have been a habitat of the Tabon Bird, also known as the Philippine Mound Builder. So, yan yung itura ng Tabon Bird. So, the next period is the New Stone Age or Neolithic Period. 10,000 to 500 BC. New types of stone tools appeared in various parts of the Philippines, more polished and highly specialized. Primarily, blading acid adds like forms for forest clearing and boat making. The smooth surface of this type of stone tools was made by rubbing against another stone. So, nabubuo ito sa pamagitan ng pag ng isang stone to other stone. This period was otherwise known as agricultural revolution by anthropologists. The important crops during this period are the taro or gabi and yam and or obi. It, ito yung mukha ng taro at saka yam. So, familiar naman siguro tayo niyan, di ba? So, applied rice farming has been developed during this period. So, marunong na silang mag rice farming. Striking the stones produces sparks, resulted fire. Dito na natuklasan ang apoy. Pumagitan hmm. so, ng dalawang stones na kabuo ng apoy. Light and heat became available. So, during this period, available na ang light and heat. Production of bay clay pots implies that fire had been fully utilized. So dahil sa nagkaroonan ng production ng bay clay pots, 
ibig sabihin na napuli utilize yung file during this period. Manufactured pottery made possible by process called kilning made which makes use of fire. So yan, yan yung paggawa ng pottery noon through the process called kilning. Ayan, makikita nyo naman na gumamit ng apoy. Because of fire, it changed the lifestyle of people, particularly in meals preparation. Because dito na nila uh, nalaman na pwede mag-grill or mag-boil ng kanilang food. Diba dati, ang ginagawa lamang nila ay yung kinilaw. Pero during this period, ay marunong lang mag-grill or mag-boil ng kanilang foods. Slash and burn agriculture practiced by early settlers also caused them to search new land. Jars as burial coffins for secondary burial were also made. Closely related which burial practices were bone washing and bone painting or dipping with materials like sapon wood or red eye wood or sisal pinia sapan and hematite or iron ore for protection from decay. Ginagawa nila ito upang mapreserve nila ang labi ng kanilang mga minamahal. In El Nido Cave, Palawan, painted bones were placed in a chest inside the cave. In some areas, corpses were entered directly into the ground in reclining or bent position. All kinds of burial, funerary offerings, or pabaon were included such as clothes, food, and weapons. Others covered the faces of the dead with thin sheets of gold to prevent bad spirits from entering the body. So, we have the Manunggol Jar. Isa itong sample ng burial coffins. It is now at the National Museum. This Manunggol Jar is an example vessel dating between 890 BC and 710 BC. It is now considered a national cultural treasure of the Philippines. So the upper portion of the jar has curvilinear incised gold designs painted with red hematite or iron oxide. On the lid cover is a form of a boat with two human figures. The figure at the cover is a boatman steering the ship of the dead. So you can see the two figures.
And then the figure in front is the passenger whose arms cross over his chest represent the soul of the deceased whose bones were placed in the jar. So, yan yung uh, meaning ng dalawang human figure sa ibabaw ng ating manunggol jar. Philippine pottery shows a variety of shapes and decorative techniques such as incision, stippling, applique, and impression by rope and mud. Designs were usually geometrics. So, ang design ng ating mga pottery dito sa Pilipinas ay geometrics. Pottery became more functional like palayok for cooking, banga and tapayan for storing liquid. In Ilocos, the making of Bornai pottery lives on. So, patuloy pa rin yung Bornai pottery sa Ilocos. So, yun yung sample ng Bornai jars. So, the next period is the Early Metal Age, 500 BC. It refers to the time in the development of human culture where tools and weapons were made of metal, which gradually replaced stone tools. The metal implements at this stage were crudely fashioned. Copper is the first metal to be widely used. Rope copper was then pounded into ornaments and to some extent into tools. Bronze made of imported tin and other metals like copper emerged simultaneously with copper as a result of inter-island inter movements of people. Although bronze had entered in the Philippines, it did not constitute a major technological phase in the development of metal age in the country because of preference of early inhabitants to iron ore in tool making. Jewelry consists mainly of beads. Beads that are made of jade, stones, glass, shells, seeds, twigs, and stems. Reads of plants created into necklaces. Beads made of semi-precious stones endured decay. Jewelry is an ancient art, began as amulets and charms to ward off bad spirits or to give supernatural powers to the wearer. The Tibuli wore body ornaments to please the gods and to signify the status of the wearer. Yun ang paniniwala ng mga Tibuli kaya nagsusuot sila ng mga 
jewelries and ornaments. Later, these ornaments became purely decorative. Bali, sinusuot nila ito para na lamang pang dekorasyon sa katawan. The appearance and utilization of improved iron tools as the major technological device for exploiting the environment constitute the developed Iron Age. Use of iron became widespread. Community specialization emerged as shown by the advances in tin smithing, jewelry making, and in the utilization of resources. Iron tools were recovered in Luzon, particularly in Bulacan, Batangas, Rizal, and also in Palawan and Masbate. So that's are the examples of iron tools. Early Filipinos made metal implements like knives from simple to elaborate ones. We have the stumpak or blow guns. And Kalikot or pounding beetle nuts into powder. Gongs to mark the hours of the day and night. Scholars contend that during this age, the important industries were metalworking, pottery making, glass making, and tie and dye weaving. Cloth weaving replaced the bark cloth beaters for fashioning dress and other apparel. It is believed that the backloom similar to that of the Ifugaos, Buntoks, and other Mindanao groups was utilized. Fabrics and blankets were not only used for everyday living but also for important rituals. Next period is the Millennium Anno Domini. Some families from surrounding island kingdoms set sail in boats and establish their communities along riverbanks or on deltas. Maritime transportation became the major motivation for inter-island contacts and commerce especially with Asians. So dahil napapadali na yung transportation, kaya mas madali na lang yung communication with other Asian countries. This phase of Filipino prehistory is known to the anthropologists as the age of contact or from 500 to 1400 Anno Domini, which is the period of trading relations with neighboring islands, mostly by Asian traders. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na Age of Contact. Community life dominantly founded on trade and by increasing specialization and craftsmanship. The people of Southeast Asia became highly nomadic because of water transportation. So dahil madali lang yung transportation, mas madali makablipat ng area yung mga tao sa Southeast Asia.
For the natives to succeed in engaging maritime trade with their Asian neighbors, they had to improve their seamanship and boat building skill. So, para maging matagumpay sila na makapag-communicate sa other Asian neighbors, so dapat improve nila ang, kanya, ang kanilang seamanship and also their boat building skill. Para naman maging successful yung pag-engage nila ng maritime trading. Balangized the early wooden watercrafts in the country. So, ito yung pinakauna na wooden craft sa Pilipinas. It is basically a plank boat. It was driven either by sail or by padding. So, yan yung sample ng balangay. The discovery in Butuan, Agusan del Norte in the late 1970s served as the pieces of evidence to further prove the technical know-how of the early Filipinos. So ito yung magpapatunay na tayo mga Pilipino ay may alam na sa uh, mga bagay-bagay bago pa man dumating ang mga mananakop na Espanyol. The first boat, now preserved and displayed in a site museum in Libertad, Butuan City, had carbon date of 320 Anno Domini. The second boat, which was dated 1,250 Anno Domini, has been transferred to the National Museum in, in Manila. So, yan yung dalawang important boat na mayroon siyang significant, uh, significant sa ating kasaysayan. So, yan yung ating cultural evolution of the Philippines. So, before we end, yesterday is history, tomorrow is, is a mystery, today is a gift of God, which is why we call it in the present thank you